Hi, I'm Alan Murray and welcome to this session for Aspiring Futures where we'll be exploring the nature of enterprise and entrepreneurship. And to do this, we'll be looking at the world of business from the perspective of both self-employment and also working in organisations. In doing so, we'll see clearly that the qualities, skills and behaviours needed to be successful in both of these spheres of business are actually identical and also that we already possess many of these attributes ourselves already. So this digital session has been designed to allow you to gain the relevant theory needed and then also to apply this using a range of short, practical and relevant activities. So basically, I'll talk for a bit and then I'll ask you to reflect on a question or carry out an activity and where required, your tutor can pause this presentation in order to give you time to carry out this reflection or task before moving on. So let's get started. So in the context of business, entrepreneurial people fall into two distinct categories. The entrepreneur or the entrepreneur or internal entrepreneur. And the difference between the two relates largely to the environment in which they operate. Entrepreneurs will start or develop a business which they own, whilst intrapreneurs, sometimes referred to as corporate entrepreneurs, will display the same characteristics while working as an employee. And if we remember that the aim of this module is to develop entrepreneurial graduates, then when thinking of the entrepreneurial graduate, we need to focus on these two separate graduate streams, the future entrepreneur starting and working in their own business, and the entrepreneur who will be the source of creativity and innovation for a company which they do not own themselves. The majority of UWS students will never start or own their own business, but what they will do is hopefully become entrepreneurial within the organisations which employ them. So why is entrepreneurship so important? Well, the Global Entrepreneurship Monitor, sometimes referred to as GEM, is the largest international research initiative that analyzes the propensity of the adult population of a country to participate in entrepreneurial activities. They're also interested in the conditions that enhance these entrepreneurship initiatives. The report itself highlights that small business is an increasingly important part of the UK and global economy. According to GEM, in the UK in 2015, almost one quarter of working age individuals were engaged in entrepreneurial activity or intended to start a business within the next three years. So that's quite a significant number. Enterprising employees, on the other hand, are also the engine house of innovation and many go on to also start businesses of their own. 94% of corporate entrepreneurs think they have the required skills and knowledge to start a business of their own. The purpose of this exercise is to gain some insight into your own personal skills inventory in a number of key areas which are important to the entrepreneur. This includes aspects such as attitude to risk, creativity and working with and leading others. The test itself is subjective and there's no right or wrong answer. So complete the short test and reflect on these questions. If the average person scored themselves as 50%, where are you on the scale? What do you feel is getting in the way of the higher score and what can you do to overcome this? And lastly, from these results, do you feel you're enterprising or entrepreneurial? Now, Jack and Anderson 1999 discussed the need to recognise that whilst teaching basic business management skills such as finance and business planning is as important as ever, it's also necessary to prepare the student for the employment market by helping them to develop their abilities in other areas such as problem solving, creativity, opportunity spotting, collaboration and innovation. These are attributes which are both useful and valued in the labour market. Neck and Green 2011 discussed the typical traits, attributes and qualities associated with successful entrepreneurs. They call this the do you have the right stuff approach. Lions and Lions 2002 suggest that these right stuff qualities fall largely into four key categories. Technical skills, 
management ability, entrepreneurship, and lastly, personal maturity. Now, personal maturity involves factors such as self-awareness and also the ability to reflect on your own performance and to learn from this. Now, there's been considerable debate over the years regarding whether entrepreneurs are born or made, the so-called nature versus nurture debate. However, most theorists agree that some of the traits and qualities we have discussed are likely to be found in the successful entrepreneur and the successful entrepreneur. Thompson 2004 suggests that there are six key characteristics of the entrepreneur. Firstly, we have focus, which is the ability to lock onto a target. Then we have advantage, which is the ability to identify opportunities. Next, we have creativity, which is the ability to generate lots of ideas. Then we have ego, which is the need to be in charge of our own destiny. We also have team, which is the ability to find the right people, and social, which is the need to be working towards a cause. Now consider Thompson's model of entrepreneurial facets and then reflect on these quotes from successful entrepreneurs and try to identify what entrepreneurial facets they are highlighting here. So moving on, let's look at some of the data relating to entrepreneurial people. And here we're going to look at some of the key trends around entrepreneurship. So firstly, let's look at age. Now timing is a critical consideration for many entrepreneurs and most people do not leap into setting up a business until they feel they are good and ready. The average age of company founders when they started their current business is 50. Why might this be? Next, let's look at family background and a high number of entrepreneurs are the sons and daughters of entrepreneurs themselves. Less than 1% come from either extremely rich or extremely poor backgrounds. So what does this tell us? Now let's think about serial entrepreneurship and the majority of entrepreneurs are serial entrepreneurs in that they launched on average 2.3 businesses. Why might this be? Now let's look at industry experience and 75% of entrepreneurs who start their own business have worked as employees at other companies for more than six years before choosing to set up on their own. 90% of people starting a business do so in the same market and industry that they've previously worked in. Does this surprise you? In terms of education, 95% of individuals founding very large companies held a university degree and 47% held an advanced degree. So is education an important factor or not? In terms of motivation, of the key motivating factors for people setting up their own business, 75% wanted to make money, 68% wanted to commercialise an idea they had, 66% found the idea of starting a business exciting and appealing, and 5% starting a business did so for themselves because they could not find a job. What are your thoughts on this? Now, if we look at marriage, 70% were married when they launched their business. But is this important? In terms of children, 60% of entrepreneurs had at least one child when they launched their first business, with 44% having two or more. How is this important? So the question here is, do these statistics surprise you? And what is an important motivating factor for the entrepreneur and what isn't? So if we stay for the moment in motivations for the entrepreneur, we need to understand that entrepreneurship can also be triggered either by push or pull factors. Pull factors can be important and include things such as having entrepreneurs in the family, the influence of role models, the desire for personal independence, the quest for success, or the pursuit of wealth. Push factors can be equally powerful and include factors such as the lack of job opportunities, unemployment risk, feelings of not fitting in, and the need to get out of the place or situation where we currently find ourselves. But entrepreneurs are only part of the picture. Enterprising people can also be entrepreneurs, and remember, we often refer to these individuals as internal entrepreneurs or also corporate entrepreneurs. So here we have a list of key motivating factors for the employee, but it's important to remember that these factors are based on what the employer thinks their employees want from the job. So look at this list and take a moment to think about which three out of the 10 motivating factors the employee would choose for themselves. 
So as we can see, there is clearly a disconnect between what the employer thinks will motivate their employees and what the employees themselves tell us will motivate them. So now let's consider what qualities, characteristics, traits or behaviours you would expect to observe in a successful entrepreneur or entrepreneur, an enterprising person. So for a moment, pause this digital lecture and take a minute to write down as many of these characteristics as you can and then restart the lecture and compare it to my list. So this is a fairly comprehensive list of enterprising attributes and clearly some of the terms here may have potentially negative associations and we'll look more closely at this throughout the module and in our online discussions. So now let's look at the characteristics of the small business manager. Now it's not a given that the qualities needed to start a business are necessarily the same as those needed to manage a business, whether that business is owned by you or not. Business managers are ultimately responsible for overseeing and supervising a company's activities and employees and as a result they need to have a wide range of traditional management skills and attributes. Business managers report to top executives in a larger organisation but in a small company the manager might either own the company or report directly to the owner. In many businesses, the role of business manager may grow out of a small business owner's desire to shed some of the multiple roles mentioned above in order to focus on specific aspects of company expansion or market penetration. The business manager for a time may share duties with the owner. As the owner gains trust in the business manager, they'll pass on other duties. Ideally, the business manager and the owner work together to ensure that the business of running a successful business is attended to. This can often be a process of the owner relinquishing the functions for which there is a comparative disadvantage for his or her continued involvement. Whilst not every individual will possess all of these attributes in abundance, the key characteristics needed here are as follows. So first, we have creativity, and this is the ability, as we know, to generate and develop creative ideas and solutions. Then we have leadership, and here this is the effective leading by example and decision making which allows the business to move forward. And here, the manager needs to be a role model to others. Some companies might promote employees with considerable experience from within a department to lead the group, for example a salesperson who has years of experience, but generally there's an expectation that the manager will have some formal training. Then we have goal orientation which is the ability to focus on the objective rather than necessarily how to achieve the objective. We've also got to think about innovation which is the ability to commercialise an idea or make it happen and gain value from it. Then we have team building, which is the ability to gather followers to share in the overall vision. And we also have to think about risk taking, which involves not being afraid to take measured and calculated risks. However, the entrepreneur is not a gambler. We also need to think about dynamism, which involves using charisma, energy, enthusiasm and passion to develop ideas. And we've also got problem solving, which is the ability to not be put off by barriers or obstacles that stand in our way. Business managers by definition are problem solvers who work to overcome the obstacles that may prevent a department or a company from reaching its goals. And lastly, we need to think about commitment which involves demonstrating resilience and a determination to get the job done. So having completed your entrepreneurial scorecard, review these materials for the session and think about the areas where you marked yourself particularly high or particularly low and consider how you might develop these skills in order to be more entrepreneurial and more effective. So by the end of this session, you should be able to describe the range of challenges facing the two main categories of enterprising people, identify the key characteristics of the enterprising individual, and also reflect on your own qualities as an enterprising person through practical exercises. So now let's look more closely at the nature of entrepreneurship and we'll start with the intrapreneur. 
Now when we look at successful innovation in successful companies, we often find small independent groups of imaginative action takers working to circumvent or even sabotage the formal systems that supposedly manage innovation. Now these people often form underground teams and networks that routinely bootleg company resources or steal company time to work on their own projects. They make things happen while those trying to innovate by the official route are still waiting for permission to begin. Entrepreneurs do incur some personal risk in that often they are working in direct contravention of their organisation's strategy, although they are doing so in the interest of the organisation itself. This has the potential to get them into trouble. Entrepreneurs challenge the normal way of doing things, asking important questions such as, is this the most efficient way the task can be performed? Can this technology, product or service be used in other ways? Can the task being performed be of value to additional recipients? Is this task still of value to others or should it no longer be performed? Is there a different technology that we should buy that could efficiently execute this task? And lastly, is there a way I could modify my work output that would be acceptable to my client or the user that would be easier for me to produce? highlight some of the core principles of creativity and innovation. Creativity itself can be described as the production of new and useful ideas in any domain. Creativity stems from creative thinking skills, knowledge and motivation. And innovation is a successful implementation of creative ideas within an organisation. The extent of innovation can be defined as disruptive or incremental. Successful innovation uses new technological knowledge and or new market knowledge and employs this within a business model that can deliver a new product and or service to customers who will hopefully purchase a price that will provide profits and product development is a process of designing, creating and marketing new products or services to benefit the customer. When looking at product development, we need to think firstly where do good ideas come from. And it's been estimated that for every 11 ideas that enter the new product de development process, only one of these will ever be successfully launched. New ideas are a premium and the more ideas you generate, the more you're likely to come up with something which is genuinely innovative. It's a myth that good ideas come from a single light bulb moment. Generally what happens is that people come up with good ideas because they've been thinking about a problem for a very long time before taking any action. The creative process itself can be very messy and you can expect to generate and reject lots of ideas until you get to one that you think might work. It's also worth remembering that developing new products in a dynamic and fast moving market like the technology sector is even harder because a product which is technically feasible may not be economically viable. And also there may be any number of reasons why the product might not make it through the product development process. So now let's consider the following statements and we need to think about the missing values here and you might want to pause this video to give yourself a minute to reflect on the questions. So the following statistics highlight the extent of the challenges facing the entrepreneur in the fast moving technology sector, where clearly a lot of innovation is to be found, but also the risk of failure is quite high. Only one in six million high tech businesses make it to market. Less than 1% of business plans received by venture capitalists in this area get funding. And successful technology entrepreneurs typically own less than 4% of their own company by the time they have a fully formed business. And of these, 60% of technology companies for a variety of reasons end in bankruptcy. So who's an entrepreneur? Well, the popular image of the entrepreneur is the iconic and charismatic maverick taking on the establishment and winning and accumulating vast wealth as a reward. 
However, the reality is somewhat different. The vast majority of ordinary entrepreneurs are normal people who simply have the desire and the self-belief to challenge the way that things are normally or traditionally done in order to do things better, either by setting up their own business or through working for others. And these entrepreneurs come in all shapes and sizes. First we have the dabblers who are individuals who are basically testing their ideas in an ad hoc and unstructured way. Then we've got the hobby investors. These are running businesses based on their chosen personal lifestyle. In these cases it's not all about making money and being able to work in an area you enjoy is a key factor such as adventure sports enthusiasts. Then we have owner managers and these are people who own a business and are also in the business running it operationally on a day-to-day -day business. Next we have the serial entrepreneurs and serial entrepreneurs are individuals who set up more than one business. Commonly most entrepreneurs set up between two and three businesses in their lifetime, however some set up many more. Next we have social entrepreneurs and these are people for whom the motivation for being in business is to do good works which benefit society. We also have high growth entrepreneurs with aspirations to build a very large scale business very quickly. And lastly we have employees. These are entrepreneurial individuals who work within an organisation which they do not own. And regardless of the type, one common factor for the entrepreneur is the faith they have in their own ability to get things done. Now entrepreneurship is as old as the human race itself and the term stems from a French word which means to take things into your own hands. The term was first used during the industrial revolution to describe the new phenomenon of the individual who formulated an idea, developed that idea, assembled the resources required and from this created a new business venture. Now we can find definitions of entrepreneurship going back hundreds of years which would still be relevant to the modern entrepreneur today. Many of these definitions touch on the concepts of uncertainty and risk and also of management and control which are key themes in the field of entrepreneurship that we'll explore as we progress through this module. One of the key characteristics which enterprising people require is good communication skills which are often referred to as interpersonal skills. Some common examples of interpersonal skills are verbal communication, non-verbal communication, listening skills, negotiation, problem solving, decision making and assertiveness. While the enterprising individual will undoubtedly already possess strong interpersonal skills, they should always be trying to develop these by taking advantage of learning opportunities which present themselves such as training courses, on the job learning, observing others in action, formal and informal presentations, coaching, delegation, discussion, reflection, empowerment opportunities, projects, networking and feedback. Another key attribute which is often attributed to enterprising people is their ability to take and cope with risk. But how important a factor is this? So if we take the example of the entrepreneur, consider the following questions. And again, you might want to pause this lecture and give yourself time to think about the answer before it appears. So the question before you is what percentage of small businesses cease trading within one year? two years and five years. So the reality of business startup and the associated risk is often misunderstood as we can see here from the actual figures. But the risks for the entrepreneur are not limited to just risk of failure. We also need to think about the risk involved in running your own business and the potential risk in achieving the financial return you need from doing so. So consider this question, of the estimated 4.7 million small businesses across the UK, what percentage of business owners do not pay themselves a regular salary? 
What percentage of small business owners take home less than £10,000 a year? What percentage earn £32,000 or more? And what percentage of entrepreneurs earn over £150,000 a year? So here we can see one of the key challenges for the entrepreneur. Whilst there may be real intangible benefits to running your own business such as making your own decisions and doing something you enjoy, the financial benefits may be less attractive for some. So considering the figures you've seen around business survival rates and earnings, think about the following questions. Do these figures surprise you? Why might the business survival rates be higher than some people might imagine? And does the personal financial return for starting your own business justify the effort? So hopefully that's provided some insight into the skills, qualities, behaviours and attributes required by graduates like yourselves in the modern world of business. And remember, that could include both self-employment or running your own business or employment working in somebody else's organisation that you do not own.